This is Morgan Hazelwood, back again with more writing tips and writerly musings. Today we're going to go over what lies beneath, adding subtext to your story. In real life, people are not necessarily open and honest about their feelings, their intentions, or their actions. Sometimes they try to hide them, and sometimes they honestly don't know themselves what their intentions are. In writing, subtext helps add to a character, helping round them out from two dimensions into three, if you can figure out how. Subtext is how you manage the big reveal or plot twist at the end of your book and have readers go, oh, of course, rather than feeling cheated or misled. But how do you add subtext to your novel? At Balticon 51, I attended a panel just on this topic. So first off, we define what is subtext. It's the nonverbal communication piece. Often you find that developing writers feel the need to spell out everything that happens in the plot or when writing for younger readers. But more established writers tend to leave a lot of that in the subtext, so it can really be a sign of skill. They're the things that the reader can pick up on that the point of view character might miss. It's not good to rely on for plot, but it's amazing at filling in the pieces. Now, when writing subtext, it's not always intentional. The best sorts of subtext are the ones that you come across when rereading. Some of the favorite subtext related moments that the writers in the panels talked about were that moment when you look at all of those random things that you put in your novel that you thought were simply world building and about four fifths the way through the book, you realize you've actually been building to a major plot point the whole time. Another way that readers find subtext in their own writing is when we reread a scene of dialogue that we've written and we realize how the character responds, what they don't say, and what they did while they were saying it, and how much that really reveals about the character. Now, subtext is not just a literary device. You can find subtext in the real world. The more repressed a society is, the more likely the subtext tells more than the actual words themselves. When you're being watched or have to be on your best behavior to not show your emotions to your uppers, that emotion has to come out some way. Next family gathering, sit there and watch and see how much doesn't need to get said. How much is conveyed with just a look and a half a word. Both ambassadors and conmen are both very skilled at subtext. That's how they get people to buy in with what they're selling or trying to get people to agree to. They don't say anything, but they imply so much. Abuse victims are also very, very skilled at picking up on subtext. So much so that they start to pick it up when it isn't there. In some countries, like Japan, subtext is the text. To the unacquainted Westerner, we might miss what's really being said when we're offered something like a drink. We'll say no when we're done drinking, and unless we say no the right way, they think we're just being polite. The men there even have their own grunting language. It's not the sound or the tone of the grunts. It's all about the timing and how they grunt. Now, if you think about it, paranoia could simply be classified as a subtext disorder. You just see subtext when there isn't any. So how do you incorporate subtext in your novel? Well, there's hundreds of ways to do it, but here are just seven tips. One, use vowel repetition, word sound, or alliteration to give a section 
a mouthfeel. Two, change up the rhythm, the length of the words, the length of the sentences, maybe slip into iambic pentameter to give the scene an undercurrent of a pattern. Have different subtext between the author, narrator, and the point of view character. The narrator might pick up on stuff that the character doesn't, and the character might pick up on stuff that the narrator doesn't. Four, try to imagine the scene that you're writing as if you were shooting a film. Just see where the people go and what they do. Tip five, try changing some Anglo-Saxon words to Romance language words, or vice versa. In English, the Romance version comes from the Norman invasion and was more for the nobility or polite society versus what the commoner spoke. So that can really change a dynamic in a scene. Speaking of, have the characters with more power or agency be unaware of the subtext because they don't have to worry about saying the wrong thing and pissing off their king. Tip seven, have character A respond to character B as if they were character C. It really reveals a lot about character A and their relationship with characters B and C. So, where do you look for subtext in other writings? Subtext does lend itself more to some genres than others. I mean, it's found in lots of science fiction and fantasy, but it doesn't work always. It doesn't work in stuff like what Anne Rand writes, or traditional pulp mysteries. High action thrillers tend to be low on the subtext. Yes, they have things hidden in them, but it's not about necessarily a lot of character motivations that's out there and just happening. But you can find an amazing amount of subtext in places you least expect it. Children's movies, even Wile E. Coyote and Bugs Bunny cartoons, they have huge amounts of in-jokes and cultural references in the background. And it's a great way to make a media accessible to an entire family, both children and adults. Subtext in older novels can really show the biases and cultural understandings of the time. Some authors and shows that make great examples. Shakespeare, he's quoted as using subtext like a scalpel. There's so much not being said that the audience of the time knew to pick up on that is almost lost in translation these days. Another author who's excellent at subtext is Hemingway. He uses very few words and he packs a lot of meaning into all of them. Sharon Lee and Steve Miller's Leaden books, the culture that is predominant within their novels is all about the subtext and who's talking to who in what role. The movie Tran Lost in Translation is excellent at subtext because they can't actually use their words to communicate. So most of the story is told in subtext. The TV show Supernatural has a lot of subtext, um, lots of cultural references, and even the music adds a lot of context to the story. Some books to look at um, that help teach you how to incorporate subtext. What Every Body Is Saying, the full fact book of cold reads. Find out how fake psychics learn to watch their marks and figure out educated guesses. Winning Through Intimidation and Death of the Author by Roland Barthes. What examples of subtext do you have? And do you have any stories about picking up on subtext in retrospect? Thank you for tuning in and I hope you learned a little about putting subtext into your novel.